Hello and welcome back to our 25th anniversary celebration of the David John Falconer Memorial Organ here at St. James in the City, Los Angeles. If you have watched other episodes in this series, you know that this organ dates from 1911, originally built by Murray M. Harris for St. Paul's Cathedral in downtown Los Angeles. Rebuilt and enlarged here in 1995 at St. James, this organ contains three floating divisions. I'm Jim Buonamani, and in this episode, I'd like to introduce you to these floating divisions, and I'll conclude with a performance of the Prelude and Fugue in B minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. Before we begin, let me explain that a floating division is one that is not assigned to any particular keyboard or manual. This is unlike the swell division and the great division and the choir division, each of which are associated with a particular keyboard or manual. A floating division is accessible on any of these manuals as assigned by the organist, including sometimes the pedal board. And the organist does this by means of three tilting tablets, which are located here. If I activate this tilting tablet, you'll see that the echo and positive are playable on the swell manual. This tablet makes those divisions playable on the great manual, and this tablet makes those floating divisions playable on the lowest or choir manual. So let's begin today's tour with the echo division, a part of the organ that was not built by Murray Harris, but was original to St. James's previous Kimball organ of 1928. The purpose of an echo division is to offer ethereal sounds that seem to emanate from a distant location, kind of like an echo. This division is located inside a chamber high up in the bell tower of the church. The pipes speak through a small opening in the chancel ceiling, and as an enclosed division, it can sound even more distant when its shutters are closed. The echo division is composed of just four ranks of pipes, a flute, a string with its matching celeste, and a reed stop. I'll explain the terms celeste and reed in a future episode. Perhaps the most interesting stop in this division is the Vox Humana, which is Latin for human voice. Kimball's interpretation of this reed stop is a quintessential theatrical one, typical for its time when silent movies were at their height and organs were often used to accompany them. Have a listen to our Vox Humana on the Echo Division. I think you will easily be transported to the early movie-making days of the 20th century. Let's now have a look at the organ's newest floating division added in 2005 during the organ's 10th anniversary year, the Antiphonal Positive. You can see it located on the gallery rail at the opposite end of the church. This division is housed in a beautiful case built by Joseph Zamberlan and Company of Ohio. It features three stops, totaling 207 pipes. And at the top of the central tower, we discover a cymbal stern, which is a percussion mechanism of four rotating bells. You might be wondering where the term positive comes from. 
The Latin root of the word is ponere, which means to place. And this referred to the ability to move and place early positive organs in various locations throughout a church building. Today's positive organs are of many sizes and typically not movable. Our positive has an elegant Gothic facade of basswood carvings decorated in gold leaf, and in the center, an embossed principal pipe, which is achieved by the organ builder hand carving a design into the sheet metal prior to its being rolled into a finished pipe. The three ranks of pipes that compose this division are a principal rank and two individual flute ranks, each voiced by Manuel Rosales. The division was funded by a gift from the Amundsen Foundation, as well as donations from parishioners and friends of the parish. The last of the floating divisions is the Trompet en Chama division, located above the antiphonal positif and just below the Great West Window. Although this division can be played on any of the manuals of the console, including the pedal board, it technically is not a floating division. And that is because its pipes are accessed through individual stop knobs located here above the top swell manual. This row of stops here are all dedicated to the trompette en chemin division. Unlike the tilting tablets that activate the echo and positive divisions, the use of individual stop knobs offers an additional feature of being able to play this division at various pitch levels, either sounding at its normal pitch or an octave higher or an octave lower. For instance, on the great division, we have the normal middle C pitch here. A different stop knob will play that same key an octave lower and a different stop knob here will play the same key an octave higher. So you could technically add all three stops at these various pitches. Now, because the trompette en chemin division is so unique to this organ, I've decided to devote an entire upcoming episode to it, and I hope you'll want to revisit this series to learn all about this division's genesis and its unusual design. By now, you may have noticed that our console of three manuals had to be retrofitted and customized in various ways to include these major additions over the years. I would like to thank our consultant and curator, Manuel Rosales who has been invaluable in determining how best to integrate these additions. And I also want to thank Lee Walcott of the Amundsen Foundation, who has been the main source of funding for them. There is no doubt that this organ will eventually be outfitted with a console of at least four manuals in the future. But for its first 25 years here, it has managed to control the vast resources of this organ to great effect. And I'd like to give credit to one more person who has been instrumental in fitting the design of the digital interface uh, with all of these additions on this console. And that man's name is Richard Houghton of Michigan. Richard is known worldwide for his technical prowess in this area, and we are so glad that he has been with us from the beginning to adapt this console to all the new technology uh, of the past 25 years. Now on to the music. Bach wrote the B minor prelude and fugue during his most creative final years as cantor of St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. The work exhibits an intense development of simple ideas into much more complex ideas. I've chosen this piece to showcase our antiphonal positive, which I have assigned to the bottom manual of the console here. Both the prelude and fugue 
are constructed in contrasting sections, and you will clearly hear the structure of these works revealed as I move back and forth from the great division and great manual to the antiphonal positive located on the bottom manual. It's a grand composition from its stark opening in the prelude to the fugue's immense layering of motives developing toward a majestic conclusion. In this work, we hear Bach at the height of his career, a period of personal reflection and profound expression.